Hello crafty friends! My name is Alicia but you can call me Crafty Al and I'm here today with a project for Not Too Shabby and we're going to be making a sheet load of buggy cards using their newest paper pads of the month. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to create and get a few tips along the way. In front of me are the newest paper pads from Not Too Shabby, and it is part of their monthly paper pad subscription. This month, like always, you get two paper pads. One is called Glow, and it is full of lightning bugs and some stars and moons and flowers. And there is even a page of cut aparts, which we'll be using these for our focal point today. The second pad is called Winged Beauties and it has some lovely dragonflies in it with some coordinating florals and striped pattern papers. And it also has a sheet of cut aparts for the focal points. Along with the pattern papers, we are going to be using the February 2023 sheet load of cards for the layout and we'll just be using the single card dimensions. Now if after watching the video you're interested in downloading this printable for free, I will have the video linked in the description box that tells you how you can do that. As I start the process, I will tell you about other tools and products I bring in, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before I got started on the video, I did use my brother's scan and cut and those two focal point pages that I showed you before and got that cut out kind of like my own ephemera. I also went ahead and chose my pattern papers from the pads. Now, unlike the original sheet load, instead of having different patterns on the front, each of the pieces is gonna be from a single pattern. Now, I do have a process video on my channel, which I will link below if you want more specifics on cutting. But because we're using six by six paper instead of the 12 by 12 shown on the printable, I'm gonna quickly show you what to do. So we're going to use a single 6x6 six six piece for each card, and I started by cutting a piece that was 4 inches tall. I then cut one piece that was 3.5 inches wide and one piece that was 2.25 inches wide. Now there are some scraps left over, and I'm going to use some of that later on. Now, like I show here, you could flip these patterns back and forth and use the front and back, but I did decide today that all of the pieces would be the same. To finish cutting this pattern, I took the three and a half by four inch piece and cut it into four pieces that were one inch tall. Again, on the original process video, I do have some special tips about that. I then cut the rest of the pattern papers in that same exact way. Using the single card dimensions from the printable, off screen I cut some coordinating card stocks for the dragonfly papers. You'll notice on my colored mats that I use my dots embossing folder on those just to give a little extra texture. I also made some coordinating card bases that were top fold and chose the dragonflies that I thought would contrast best with the pattern paper behind it. Now for my sentiment piece, instead of using the white cardstock ones that I cut, I'm actually going to be putting the sentiments down at the bottom. A tip that I did not show in the original process video was one to kind of help with placement when you put those four strips of paper on their cardstock mat. I brought in my mini Misty so I would have a lip that after I added the adhesive to the back of the strip, I could push it right up against there so that I knew the pattern paper and the cardstock were aligned at the bottom. 
I just flipped it around for the second side. Now if you do do this way, just make sure that you know which way your paper is going if it has a direction. And then once those outside pieces were placed, I just by visual or by looking, I placed the third and fourth pieces of pattern paper. Now if you don't have a misty, you could use a trimmer or anything that kind of has a flat edge to help you. Next, I adhered the smallest piece of pattern paper to its cardstock mat, and then to help me with aligning that background piece to the card base, I did go ahead and bring back in my Misty. Now, because this was a little bit thicker, I removed the mouse pad for this part, but it works so nice to make sure those edges are aligned. Now I need to get my smaller piece onto the card front. This is a place where you could play with the placement if you wanted, but I did go ahead and just stick with the sketch, putting this piece to the right side of my card front. For some dimension on the card, I brought in my quarter inch foam tape and I added some to the back of the sentiment and the wings of the dragonfly. Then I played around a little bit with the placement of each piece, and once I had something figured out, I adhered both pieces down. Now you notice that I did not put any foam tape behind the dragonfly's tail, and that's because you'll see here it rests on the sentiment piece, so I just added a little dot of adhesive under that so that it would stay adhered down but still popped up. Off screen, I finished off both of the cards by decorating the inside and adding some sequins to the front. And here's a close up look at those. Once again, I did some prep off screen for my next two cards. I started by embossing the cardstock mats with a star pattern for the pattern paper that has the stars, and on the lightning bug paper, there are stars in the background. Now my embossing folder did not fill from top to bottom of that piece of cardstock, so I did have to emboss it in parts and there's a little bit of a flattened area, but you'll see later when I place those one inch cardstock strips, it covers that up. I also chose and prepped some pieces for my focal points. This time I will be using those quarter circles in addition to the sentiment and little buggy image. Like before, I used my Misty to help with the placement of the small strips onto their mat and then getting that piece onto the card base. The rest of the assembly for this card is pretty much like the first two, but I wanted to show you for this one, instead of putting the quarter circle to the right of the skinny piece, because of the way the sentiment and the lightning bug were gonna lay, I put it to the left. Sheet load is just a great jumping off point, and you can always feel free to make the card your own. Another thing that I switched up with this card, unlike the sketch where the focal point went to the right of the card front, I actually ended up putting this one to the left. I just thought it looked better with how the sentiment and the image was. I finished decorating this card off camera and I started putting together the fourth and final card. Now most of the layout will look familiar, but because I used vellum for the quarter circle, I just wanted to show you how I adhered that to the card base, but still kind of hid that adhesive. For this one, I did decide to go with the quarter circle to the left of my vertical strip. I thought that helped the little moon and bugs stand out from that star background paper. I figured out where those pieces were gonna go, and then where I knew it would be hidden from the front, I put a little liquid adhesive on the back of the vellum. I got my focal point placed, or my little piece of ephemera, and then I got my sentiment placed. Once again, there was a little part that needed to be adhered down to the front so it didn't flip up later. And then finally, I put down three dots of glue where I wanted some sequins to go. And on the one that I placed onto the vellum, I actually lifted the vellum up and placed another dot of glue behind that. This way, there's another point of adhesion with that vellum, but it's hidden by the sequin on top. I then used my jewel picker to place those, gave them about five minutes to dry, and here are some close-up looks at finished cards three and four.
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made these quick and easy cards using the newest paper pads from Not Too Shabby. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget you can check out these products and many more at the link in the description box. And while you're there, I also have a coupon code where you can save 10% on most items in the store. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.